transhumanism, futurism, posthumanism, man plus, human plus, and an array of other words are the terms for the social movement focused on transcending humanity's flaws and bettering ourselves for the use of technological and scientific means. Hello everyone, my name is Pure Ben and today I want to talk to you about transhumanism, its role in video games as a narrative story driver, and whether or not those story drivers can actually be used in real world situations, whether they're applicable or whether they're actually anything to worry about. So the transhumanist movement aims to eventually fundamentally enhance humanity to the point where we can start referring to ourselves as post-humans. Run faster, jump higher, think better, have more legs, I don't know. The point is that we take control, we move from natural evolution to artificial evolution, accelerating our own process as a species to become better. We're already there in some way. Just look at people who are deaf, blind, or disabled. But I digress. <laughs> and I'm actually getting a bit overexcited. I think I need a new lung. Not that one, no, no, a better one. There we go, yeah, technology. But you didn't come here just to learn about transhumanism, you came to learn about whether or not the problems with transhumanism are actually applicable in real life, whether those video games actually have something going on with them. Let's start with Deus Ex Human Revolution. The main theme in that game is concerned mostly with the ethics of advancing humans with biomechanical augmentations, like new arms. Spoiler free by the way, if you haven't played it, you could always watch the Let's Play I'm doing on my channel. <laughs> Basically, these mechanical augmentations are great because they help you deal with your shortcomings, you know, like limb loss and actual death, but they cause a buildup of this stuff called glial tissue. Fun fact, this is actually a real thing. It's a layer of scar tissue that appears when the body is injured. In Deus Ex, however, it's a bad thing because it blocks the electrical signals that allow a person to control their mechanical limbs and feel through them. It's a kind of like nerve scarring, which is uh, kind of cool actually. It's really nice to see that the people that work at Deus Ex actually went out and did the research. It's quite a complicated subject and really, really cool. In Deus Ex, you can avoid this buildup by taking the drug Neuropazine. This is where the divide between rich and poor becomes perhaps the most apparent in the game. Neuropazine is only available from VersaLife, the corporation that holds the patent and strictly enforces that control. It's also only available with a prescription and required weekly in order to prevent the buildup of the aforementioned glial tissue. As a result, not only is it tightly controlled, difficult to acquire and ruinously expensive, but actually no, that's, that's everything. If you don't have the money for neuropocene and you aren't an important person, you basically don't get it. By the way, the consequences of not getting neuropocene for your augmentations range from severe migraines to seizures to death. Unfortunately, this would likely happen in real life. Now, while I can't speak for violent rejections or any sort of like implantation tech or anything like that, I do know for a fact that cochlear ear implants can range anywhere from $45,000 to $125,000, and that includes surgery, aftercare, and initial consultation. And with the price that they are, good luck getting new parts for them or anything if you need to get them sort of updated because without established healthcare, they're gonna be ruinously expensive and not for everyone. If left to a free market like the one in Deus Ex, we could even see the gap between the rich and the poor widen. And that's a big issue. After all, if the richest people in society who happen to run companies are able to augment themselves to the point where they are vastly more intelligent than their workers, then at what point do their workers become redundant? When attributes like intelligence, strength and dexterity become mere stats that can be boosted by paying for it, where does that leave the common human? Outside of the expense, these different practices can also be viewed as an affront to the particular way of life experienced by others. Eventually, humans with disabilities who choose not to undergo augmentation procedures for financial, personal, cultural or aesthetic reasons may end up being forced to undergo the procedures to remain relevant or else risk falling into a type of deprived underclass, viewed at best with pity and at worst with outright contempt and malice. <laughs> and we can see the divisions that occur here from video games like, at the time recording, the upcoming Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And don't forget the military aspects of human augmentation. Stronger, faster, smarter, these all have military applications that I'm sure the powers that be would be very interested in exploiting and putting to good use. You just need to pick up a copy of Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3 to see how that pans out. Let's move on to Bioshock guys. So this series makes great use of genetic augmentation and splicing as a narrative story driver. So in Bioshock, what happens is uh, the inhabitants of Rapture have developed Adam, which they get from slugs, sea slugs. Now this genetic resource allows them to rapidly change their genetic makeup in order to wield phenomenal cosmic powers at the cost of potential physical deformities and side effects, as well as mental deformities and side effects, ranging from hair loss to complete total homicidal insanity. 
This is a potential drawback of messing with genetics, and while it is a very fantastical and uh, unrealistic portrayal of what could happen with gene therapy, it serves as a useful cautionary word of warning. After all, choosing not to transcend your body's limitations can lead to the people that are bred or built to be more powerful than you, or to be stronger, or to be faster, or to think faster, will lead to you being outmoded. And that's not a good thing. This ties in nicely with the cyberpunk genre that transhumanism is often portrayed in, where society often becomes divided along the lines of wealth and power, with the benefits of technology going to those with the power and the wealth to maintain that position over the underprivileged victims of technology. Conclusion time! Is transhumanism a good thing, or should we heed the warnings from video games and burn the whole thing? No. No, I don't think so. The transhumanism movement is marching towards a final objective that is very noble. It attempts to help people through human ingenuity, making them better and developing them in spite of biological flaws that occur from shoddy genetics or pure bad luck. I think we just need to be responsible with it. Hello everybody, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do drop a like because it really, really helps me out and it makes me more visible to the YouTube community. I've been trying really, really like hard to up my production values on this video. I spent several weeks trying to like, you know, build it up and learning new skills in editing and uh, audio mixing, but I think I finally sort of started on the journey to do that. And I know I'm rambling a little bit at the moment, but I'm just really, really happy with how this sort of ended up. If you have any constructive feedback or anything like that, please do leave a comment because it would really, really help me out. Anything really is just great. If you just want to say, hi as well that's fantastic please do that i also have a bunch of social networks and all that sort of stuff so you can check me out on facebook twitter and twitch i rarely stream but when i do it's normally quite fun so please do join me in that come and say hi do something like that i'm very very responsive on twitter and facebook obviously i have a smartphone and stuff so you know just say hi to me really and yeah i would really really appreciate that thanks for watching you guys i do this for you and it really sort of keeps me pumped up and great so thank you and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. I'm hoping as well also just as a, a postscript to continue with this sort of style more often even though it's a lot of work it is really rewarding and I find I think this is really entertaining. If you do then let me know. If you don't then again just let me know. Constructive feedback is always really helpful. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.